Organized Grind with Oracle Uno. Yeah, yeah. Recorded live at Graph Fruit Studios in South Minneapolis. Yes, yes. What's up, world? This is Oracle Uno checking in once again with episode 14 of Organized Grind, the podcast. I'm chilling here with uh, my guy Kyle from Soda Sound Radio, Unpopular Media. Why don't you say what's up, man? What's up, world? (laughs) How's everybody doing? So, we're going to kick this shit off. Um, Things have been cool on this side. Um, Fucking, are you... Do, do, do you watch Game of Thrones by chance? I do. You do? I, that I do. Okay, okay. <laughs> I've been seeing a lot of controversy online lately about, like, people who don't watch it, people who do watch it, there's people attacking the ones that don't watch it, there's people attacking the ones that do watch it. Yeah. What's your thoughts on Game of Thrones? Uh... I mean, I'm biased, bro. I watch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, no, I, I like the show. Okay. Um, I binge watched it, though, okay. um, for like three months straight. Like sure. season one all the way to season seven. Yeah. Uh, just to get ready for the premiere, which okay. came out uh, this Sunday. Sure. So you haven't been rocking with it since its beginning? Not since day one. So okay. I, I converted over. They made me a believer. Okay, okay. So what could you tell folks who might uh, be on the edge of watching it uh what could you say to them to convince them to try it out wait until it's over (laughs) (laughs) and then take your time with it for sure uh because there's um five episodes left okay of the entire series and that's it so uh may i think may 19th or something like that is like the final episode sure and so um with the show you really have to like sit down pay attention and watch every episode okay um because somebody who's like an ant in the series and what i mean ant, like a small character like a okay. small role sure if they have a small role in the show mm-hmm. they can make a major impact later on in the series and you'd even forget that that person even existed mm. so there's so many characters so little time and you just have to keep up and watch everything so sure. uh don't begin now because there's only a few episodes left wait until it's over then take your time with it Oh, okay, cool. And so, what's your favorite part of the show? Mm. Um, I guess if I if I can just be vague about it and say my favorite season, I guess okay. would be season six. Cool. And why is that? Um, I don't. I don't. If, <laughs> for the people that never watched it, I guess. <laughs> sure. Um, but it everything's just coming into fold. Okay. Um, as to what the main plot is and and what it's uh what it's all about. Um, in the series, um, I guess to keep it blunt or vague, um, the whole point is to create a whole new world okay. and, and a peaceful world, sure. basically. Okay. And so you got people who want to rule um, what is called the Seven Kingdoms. Okay. Uh, they want to rule the Seven Kingdoms, and uh, they are pretty much dicks about being uh, ruling the Seven Kingdoms. Mm. And then you got people who uh, want to create. Let me put my phone over here. Sure. Want to create a. Uh, um, a better world, a peaceful world, because of the dicks out there, basically. So okay. Um, and season six is when it really begins to crack off, and everything like that you saw building up is starting to boil over, unfold, and uh, it's leading up to what is season eight. Okay. Right now. Sure. So. Okay. Yeah, I've never checked it out, but uh, I've been curious. But it, from what I understand, is you really do need the time to really you sink do. into it. You do, and that's uh. One of the first, like normally a show like on Netflix, because I'm a huge binge watcher. Like okay. I watch a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, and I try to watch it all at once, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, um, with that, like normally I would play a show in the background and be okay because there's filler episodes. Mm-hmm. And with Game of Thrones is not the case, and so like it's kind of frustrating okay. <laughs> getting cool. getting through it. Cool. Um, but yeah, overall, like it's it's really something you have to pay attention to and sit down and watch. Okay, cool, man. Well, mm-hmm. uh, I always start off the podcast. Uh, how did you get into hip hop culture? Grew up in it. My family, uh, I guess. Well, my older cousins, I always like grew up around them and idolized them. And so, uh, uh, my uncle as well. Like okay. he grew up uh, listening to Curtis Blow and okay. all them. And so that's where I grew up with uh my roots it was like curtis blow and grandmaster flash and all them and okay um and so he would listen to them on cassette 
mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. riding around in the car. And then my uncle, uh, my cousins put me on to like Bone Thugs, Harmony, okay. and uh, Dr. Dre, and uh, Tupac, and Biggie, and all that. So, sure. But I grew up mostly listening to like Bone Thugs and Harmony. Okay. So. Do you remember uh, what the first hip hop record was that you purchased on your own? Yeah, uh, and actually, it was it was something that I wasn't allowed to do, but I did it anyway. Okay, so I got in trouble for it, but I still got to keep it. Uh, That's shout out to fuck. yeah, <laughs> shout out to Columbia House, man, throwing oh, them throwing yeah. them twelve for a dollar joints. That's right. And so uh, uh, my first set was um, uh, Red Man Docs uh, Docs a name. Okay. Uh, Miss Elliot Super Duper Fly. Nice. Um, and just some other throwaways like uh, uh, South Park and like whatever. But, sure, sure. But my uh, uh, main ones was Miss Elliot Super Duper Fly and Red Man's Docs a name. That's a that's a really good place to start, man. <laughs> um, so for those unfamiliar with you, um, why don't we start from the beginning? Uh, okay. Why don't you let us know where you're from um, and like where did you go to school and stuff like that? Uh, so I. I actually grew up in Brooklyn Center, okay. Minnesota. Um, I was actually born in South Minneapolis on Abbott mm-hmm. Northwestern. Mm-hmm. Uh, my mom and I lived over North Minneapolis until I was about five. Uh, and then we moved over to Brooklyn Center, and I grew up there from five to about 16. Okay. Uh, when I was 16, my mom passed, and I went back over North Minneapolis mm. and stayed there till about 21, and I just bounced around all over. Okay. But my roots is Brooklyn Center. Uh, Brooklyn shout Center. out to Summer Chase Apartments. Sure. <laughs> so what was it like growing up there? Uh, it was different uh, because like uh, I it was the suburbs. Um, but then also pe- it was a transitional thing to where like people from Chicago was coming over and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so you saw all the white people leave and all mm-hmm. the black people fill in. Mm-hmm. And so um, uh, growing up, I believe from five, like five to 16, I, I dealt with mostly white people going to school because mm-hmm. I still would, went to the suburban schools. I uh, went to Northport, TLC and Cooper, mm-hmm. um, which are all still suburban schools. Um, and so then seeing people coming from Chicago was like my people, <laughs> sure, <laughs> but, sure. but I went to school like in the suburban area. So okay. um, it was it was cool getting the best of both worlds I felt. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that's how I stayed true to my hip hop roots, but I felt like I got a better education growing out to the suburban schools. Sure. Sure. So I guess, uh, like were the teachers more supportive or, or, or like when you say better education, um, Mm -hmm. can you touch on that just a little more? Um, I felt like the teachers cared more cause I went to both. I went to North and I went to Cooper. Okay. Right. And I felt like Cooper, the teachers were more personal. You felt like you were able to talk to them and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but then they also wanted you to learn the material. Um, as opposed to North High, they they spent like, well, I don't know. If a class was 60 minutes, you would spend like 40 minutes trying to kick students out. Okay. You know? Okay. So I felt like being out in the suburban schools and, and, and dealing with stuff like that, I felt like I had a better education. Sure. But, but still, like, like learning about my people, like, who I am as a black person and, and seeing like the way other people grew up black. Mm-hmm. So I felt like it was kind of the best of both worlds. Okay. Um, when you were younger, uh, do you remember what the first career path you wanted to get into? Um, I actually wanted to be a writer. Like what kind of writer? Uh, just like a, a, a story writer, like a fictional writer. Okay. Just uh, writing stories. Yeah. Just being silly. Did you write stories then? Uh, yeah, I did. What was your like first story like? Oh, I don't remember to yeah. be honest. <laughs> it's, been, it's been such a long time, man. But um, I think I wrote something about like why my family inspired me, like when I was um, uh, in high school. Okay. And it got published in like a little small book, like nothing major, just for the hell of it. And uh, I think that was really cool. But uh, that's one thing that I can remember going far back as like seventeen okay. um, was uh, me being published in that book and and. Um, you know, talking about my family and stuff like that. Nice. But I think if anything, like it was probably just some superhero type shit. Yeah, yeah that's dope. <laughs> so, um, did you graduate high school? I did not. I got my GED. Okay. So. Okay. Um, I when I it's weird because when I say I had a better better education, um, I still learned the material and stuff like that. But I'm so fucking lazy. Okay. I just never cared for homework. Sure. So teachers were pissed. Yep. I would do good in tests, and they'd be like, why are you doing good in my tests but not doing the homework when uh, you got to do the homework and you got to show up? Yeah, yeah. So, 
So at, at what age did you kind of leave high school behind? Um, I actually stuck through it all the way. Okay. Um, but then they was like, uh, you're a senior. Um, it's going to take you at least another two years. Uh. You know, so it's either you can get your GED at 18 and, mm-hmm. and walk on time or you can, um, you know, tough it out. Yeah. And I took my GED classes for like a week. Uh-huh. And... I was like, can I take my test now? And they're like, if you really want to, but we recommend that you take, you know, another at least three or four. Because mm-hmm. um, we started the school year, actually my senior year, we started the school year and in, in December, like, uh, was when they was like, all right, w- what are we doing? Because mm-hmm. this ain't going to work. So um, in January, I signed up, did my classes for like a week, took my test and passed them all. Okay. And they was like, okay, nice. whatever. That. <laughs> So, yeah. 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 I'm not saying I'm smart. Right. No, no, uh, no. I just, I'm lazy. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, does that mean that you got to walk then? I did. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. Well, cool. So, you're done with high school then. At that point, uh, what came next? I jumped straight to Dunwoody College and uh, went for uh, computer networking. Nice. And graphic design. Okay. So, so what kind of classes uh, were involved with the, compu- with the computer networking? <laughs> computer networking? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I had to do uh, Boolean algebra, which is really fucking dumb. But okay. But it's, ba- it's basically uh, ones and twos, A's and B's. Mm-hmm. That's just the math, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and it's a pretty much mainly electrical okay. engineering math, I feel. Yeah. It's basically a, a circuit, right? And mm-hmm. so um, if... If uh, A and B is on, mm-hmm. so like A and B is on, then that completes the whole circuit. Sure. And so like if uh, A is on but not B, so like mm-hmm. it, um, then it doesn't complete the circuit. So yep. uh, in their math, one plus one is one. Okay. One plus zero is zero. Okay. Zero plus zero is zero. Sure. So and that's it. Right. So, sure. So, so it, it's just like true and false. Ba- is, yeah. Is it, that's basically what yeah. it is. True and false. Okay. And so you have to figure out your switches and if if these switches are on ones and zeros a's and b's mm-hmm. then you complete your circuit and that's how you get your one but if somewhere along the way your circuit doesn't complete then that's how you get your zero so okay cool so what kind of got you on that path to those courses uh i was actually like messing with computers since i was like five okay and so i'm like this is my bread and butter i might as well just get that paper and back me up you know nice, what i mean nice um and so that's what i did didn't stick with it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, uh, now I'm back in computers mm-hmm. somehow, some way. Mm-hmm. So it was really interesting. Sure. So, I mean, going back to that then, when you were younger, um, what was your first computer experience like? Um, I think it was uh, one time my mom was taking a college course. Okay. And so I went with her because she took a typing class. And I was just messing around with uh, what was then, what, Netscape Navigator? Yeah, man, Netscape. <laughs> Shout out to Netscape. <laughs> and so uh, I was on um, uh, uh, Sports Illustrated's website, and they were talking about something with Martin Luther King. And I was doing that. I was playing the games that they had and stuff on there. Yeah. And I was like, this is really dope. Yeah. Um, and so then my mom had the typing book, and I took that and taught myself how to type. Dope. Um, and then... Um, start playing more games uh, in computers and stuff like that in fifth or well kindergarten because okay. they had the uh, apples the double sided right. floppies yes. so Oregon Trail and, right. and number munchers and everything yeah number munchers man <laughs> so, shout out to that frog <laughs> and so that's when pretty much like my roots became where I'm like this is really dope this is something I want to invest myself into uh, my mom was nice enough to where she found a cheap ass computer mm. uh, to where it was like Windows where you had to type in like W-I-N to like run your Windows. It was DOS, like, man. Yeah, like Windows 3.1 is yeah. what it was, right? And yeah. so... Um, Taking uh, me back right now. <laughs> and so I taught myself with that, man, um, um, how to like all types of stuff. Um, and so that's pretty much where it came from was like my mom taking a typing class and I just became fascinated okay man um so wow that's that's really dope uh we could probably stay on that subject like the whole damn podcast <laughs> i know i know there's uh, so much like computers you can talk about too, hell man. yeah like, man um so at at what point did you start getting exposed to what was going on hip-hop wise in the twin cities mm. as in like 
when did I start like listening to local? Yeah, like what what introduced you to the local hip hop scene? Okay, um, I think it was like actually it's it's probably been like 2005. I want to say okay. It actually goes way back before then mm-hmm. because my auntie used to date a dude named Sandman, who's a local Sandman local rapper. Yo, for and, sure. <laughs> and so uh, I started listening to him a little bit. Yeah. And then Troy Hudson and everything else, like T-Hud, who's, a, who's man. a basketball player, right? And I used to laugh at that, but I used to listen to it at yeah. the same breath, like well, right. it's a local rapper. Yeah, man. But I started really paying attention and focusing on it when my uncle brought me Brother Ali's Shadow on the Sun, mm. and. Uh, uh, he got it to me as a birthday gift for from Cheapo, mm-hmm. and since then I've just been like, "Wow, what is this? What what, what do they got to offer?" And my buddy Fish, shout out to Fish, was like, "Here's some atmosphere, bro," mm-hmm. and you know, start throwing that my way, and then he start throwing you know, Ace of Rock, and so mm-hmm. it became like local and underground in the same breath. Yeah, yeah. Because I was all on mainstream. I was listening to like, granted, it was still like rap but to me it was like twister kanye west right like things you can go to like uh what would be digital city which was my cd shop or yeah, cd yeah. shop yeah uh i used to go there and pick up all the cds there but they would never really have underground hits or right. local hits twister too at that time was on like the underground tip yeah. um before the kanye before Rockefeller, before mm-hmm. all like twista and sandman were kind of the first two like non-mainstream rappers that kind of started to come around St. Paul. Yeah. Um, at least for me. Um, and like to, to hear Twista for the first time was just like, holy shit. Like, yeah. what is this? And yeah. like, no one else really knew about yeah. Twista. And like, it was some like Chicago shit. And yeah. that was some dope shit. Yeah. Crucial Conflict. None of them came Ooh, around. Like yeah. that's when I started listening to Twista was Crucial Conflict. And then Twista's uh, Adrenaline Rush. Yo, so adrenaline rush that was, was just shit. a banger and then uh we used to believe in bass you know put turn up the bass and you know what i mean putting the, putting the volume up to like yeah 50 you know what i mean yeah, and, man. and playing some adrenaline rush while playing nba live 95 on the sega genesis right so uh <laughs> we're about to come up on our first commercial break here but um what was your uh favorite highlights from shadows on the sun oh um I think Forrest Whitaker okay, yeah. was something that spoke to me. Sure. Um, but I think just uh, Ant's production alone. Fuck yeah. Because it was just the, uh, uh, it was, um, uh, what do you call it? <clears throat> like a listen here. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like this is what we got. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so I just picked it up like thinking, honestly, I'm like, this is going to be garbage. Sure. Right? Yeah. And when I heard that introduction, uh, when the beat kicks in and he's talking about, you know what I'm saying, one size the Malone's funeral home yeah. and the other size the, the library. library. And I'm like, yeah, what? Yep. Okay. And then he just kicks in super hard. And I'm like, Phew. yep. And uh, to hear like <clears throat> about like the, the everyday struggles of, of what he goes through, mm-hmm. um, it spoke to me as a person, especially being uh, someone, being personal here, but someone who's uh, depressive. You sure. know what I mean? And so. Um, knowing that you're not alone and mm-hmm. Brother Ali really speaks to you. <clears throat> yeah. I'm not crying, promise. <laughs> but when Brother Ali really, like, like hearing that CD, it really speaks to you. It touches your soul, man. It's really dope. Mm-hmm. When you first heard him, um, did you know what he looked like? No. Was that a surprise when you first found yeah, out? It was. Yeah, it was man. not a bad thing. Right. Not like, oh my God. Right. You know what I mean? But it was just like, Wow. <laughs> it all makes sense now. Word up. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Well, yo, we're going to get into this first commercial break. We're Bra-da-da. kicking it with Kyle. Do you have a full name or just Kyle? Kyle Adams. Actually, my full name is Kyle Gabriel Isaiah Adams. Damn. Yeah. B- b- biblical name right there, man. <laughs> super. Sure. Super. But you can just call me Half Pint. Half Pint. All right. Well, we're chilling with Half Pint on episode 14. This is Organized Grind the Podcast. We will be right back. Yeah. Hey, what's up, world? This is Oracle Luno checking in to let you know that I just released a brand new EP entitled Speech Therapy. It's entirely self produced, and you can now get it at OracleUno.com. That's O R I K A L U N O. Thank you for listening. 
It's all unraveling. I'm unraveling. feeling in my abdomen. About to take a swim in a bottle from the cabinet. Full throttle, hollowing the content of the glass I sip. Too much pain, yeah, the shit ain't even masking it. Okay, got a few loose things I need to tighten up. Do it in the dark before the sky tries to brighten up. Maneuver in the shadows, that's all I'm really used to. Most people always try to find a way to use it. Feeling for a drive, I'm in need to feel alive. 95 miles per hour on a 94 ride. Pissing off passerbyers that are forced to come inside with me. Middle finger up to the punk on the side of me. Rough around the edges, disrespecting the guest list. Use all my drink tickets and forget the set list. I've seen it all before, and you ain't impressing. I ain't shit either, yeah, I've learned that lesson. Had it open and win. Got my windows open, I ain't holding it in. I try to take it slow, but the motion's intense. It happened too fast, can't get over the bends. Let it go, let it go, let it go in the wind. Got my windows open, I ain't holding it in. I try to take it slow, but the motion's intense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fast, can't get over the bends. Let it go, let it go. My vision hazy, yeah, I know I'm living crazy though, drowning in the freaking Yes, sea. yes, y'all, this is Oracle Luno checking back in, Organized Grind the Podcast, kicking it with Half Pint. Yeah, the memes are coming. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> the Game of Thrones, man, like, it, it, either you're, it, if you're a fan or not, man, they just, they're just gonna hit you. Right. Regardless. Right. You know what, <laughs> I almost let this post rock about how, it's so funny how we're at this point where... Um, you're not allowed to like somebody not liking something on the internet. Oh yeah, it's, it's just black it's, or white. It's this weird That's fucking the way we place live in this world that we're in right now. Ain't where, it? It's where, so weird. Like, what happened to having an opinion? Yeah, yeah, and just letting <laughs> it rock, and just yo, if you don't fuck with it, don't fuck with it. Yeah, don't like, don't spend the mind share to like, I'm gonna Twitter finger about your opinion yeah. I, I don't know man it's just a weird place that we're in because it's like it's like you have one side who will be like man like 420 bro hell yeah and then you'll have like the other side like yo why you posting about 420 man yeah. it's just another day yeah same thing with like game of thrones it's like i'm i'm the one percent that doesn't watch it and then it's like why are you posting about being the one percent that doesn't <laughs> watch it it's just like what the fuck yeah oh, that's a cry for attention yeah it's crazy it's it's crazy i uh actually stay away from facebook as much as i can it's it's, good. as much as i utilize it for uh the soda sound radio mm -hmm. uh cheap plug um i don't um uh, i stay away from the timeline yeah so i make my posts but i stay away from the timeline sure um and we're actually about to get into that soon but uh before i, I forget I, I i wanted to touch on this um did you have uh some sort of advice or words of encouragement uh if there's a kid out there who's going through high school thinking of going down the same path that you went down um it's okay mm -hmm. absolutely 100 percent. that's just that's just what it is um when they sat me down in the office and they was like hey like we really think you should get your ged i was like Pff. You know, like mm -hmm. I need my diploma. That's what solidifies it. But I was able to go on to college yeah. with my GED right. and Dunwoody is a private institution and they don't mess around. Mm -hmm. um, and so I got accepted. Yeah, man. Um, if you can ace your test scores and show that you do really well and that you're smart mm -hmm. um, and you can ace the assessment in college, no worries. It's yeah. OK. Yeah, that's dope, man. Um, I definitely rock with that for sure. Mm. Um, I've noticed too, uh, just in uh, the working world, that experience will always trump the piece of paper mm -hmm. any day. And if you're just a good person and you know how to be good to the other people, yeah. that will help you get so much farther than if you have some fucking four year degree or some mm. shit like that. You yeah, know? but it's. On the same, on the flip side, though, it's really weird because when jobs are looking, they're like, "We need uh, uh, your <laughs> at least uh, five years experience, and mm -hmm. you must have your degree." Mm -hmm. And then it's like, "Okay, I can't have both." Yeah, so. yeah, man. Um, but yeah, so you know, um, I guess for those listening, you know, just do do what you need to, and just work hard. Really, I mean, basically, that's yeah, it. Yeah, just work yeah. hard and and work hard at your own style yeah you know nothing's given to you but if you you just got to create it for sure exactly um so 
as you were talking about, uh, you're kind of creating a media empire on your own here. <laughs> uh, well, not help. on your own. You do have a team and everything. I but have a team. Why don't you start talking about your media company here? All right. So um, basically, it's just unpopular media. Mm -hmm. um, what we do basically is we stream our video games. Mm -hmm. um, we podcast on um, you know blogtalkradio.com. Mm -hmm. Um, we also give our opinions, insights, things like that. Sure. Uh, Chill Will does his first listens. Um, I call it a review. He says it's not, but that's neither here nor there, I guess. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, it's just pretty much an outlet of where we do media. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, we're not really known. So it's sure. unpopular. Sure. So. Um, how did that start for you? Um, it actually started out with podcasting. Okay. Um, and then, um, I was doing what was called hip hop Mondays. Okay. And I used to do like half an hour on Wednesdays, um, talking about hip hop, mm -hmm. but it was just hip hop. Um, and then I eventually grew into what is soda sound radio where I, um, um, put local talent on display, mm -hmm. um, while still talking about, uh, mainstream hip hop sure. as well. Sure. So what got you intrigued about podcasting? Um, I always wanted to be in radio. Okay. Actually, uh, I always wanted to be the guy playing the music, uh, getting the calls, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Talking to the people uh, because it's really a community-based thing, mm -hmm. and I'm a person who loves, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm all for a community. I'm all for support, and I feel like being a DJ is a way to get there. Sure. Does this go back to when you were younger? Yeah. So who who were some of uh, the influences that kind of got you into it? Um, actually, I listened to a lot of Smoke in the Light on KMOJ. Okay. <laughs> Shout out to KMOJ. <laughs> and uh, my actual, my aunt uh, does Words of Inspiration on Sundays. Oh. Um, and so um, um, hearing her on the radio I thought was cool. Yeah. Um, and then Smoke in the Light, because they always had crazy callers mm -hmm. at night. It was a night show. Yeah. Um, and so I listened to them a lot and I was like, that's cool. Like, right. that's something that I, I think I would want to do. Yeah. Um, and, uh, also writing as well. So, sure. um, but ultimately the radio is where I decided to go. I still write, you know what I mean? I yeah. write reviews. I write, you know, uh, uh, short stories and things like that. But, oh, okay. you know, I, I enjoy podcasting a lot. Yeah. So as far as the podcast realm, uh, who are some of the folks that you fuck with in podcasting? Um, the people I do listen to. Um, yeah, yeah. Tiger Belly. Um, okay, I've, which I've is, never heard of him. Which is uh, Bobby Lee. Okay. Uh, oh, The word. comedian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he has his own show. Um, I listen to a lot of Drunk Champs, which is Nori. Yeah, yeah. Um, I listen to, uh, we talked about Joe Button earlier. Yep, Joe Button Podcast. Um, I also Mall listen. And Rory and Parks over there. Yeah, dude, it's, it's really funny. Um, I also listened to um, uh, Last Podcast on the Left, which is a serial killer uh, type of podcast. A serial killer type of podcast. <laughs> Can you explain? So they'll talk about, like, uh, let's say the con concubine or whatever. Okay. Yep. Um, and they'll break that down. Like, they'll talk about, like, the shooter, uh, what led up to the events, like, their background on the mm -hmm. shooter, things like that. Mm -hmm. Um the when it took place, mm -hmm. things like that. Or they'll talk about nine eleven, or they'll talk about uh, um, a serial killer that's like infamous, okay. you know. Um, okay. And so they'll just break down that, and it's pretty funny. Okay. So uh, who all is on your team at Unpopular Media? Uh, so there's uh, me, mm -hmm. which um, I'm not even the head chair. I'm just the guy that put it all together. Sure. I, because <laughs> I don't, I don't like to say I'm ahead of anybody. Right. Well, sure. Yeah, so, yeah. but there's just me that put it all together. Um, then there's uh, C Fiasco, mm -hmm. my buddy Corvin. Okay. Uh, he does the gaming stream or oh, streams okay. on Facebook. Okay. So he's a guy that I've been seeing where the Facebook Live goes on and it's him, and yeah. you see the game going on and yep. it's him in the gamer chair and shit yep. like that. Okay. Yep. Me, uh, him, and um, um, there's Chill Will. Yep, yep. Shout uh, out Chill Will, <laughs> who uh, does the podcast with me, and also uh, Z Ready. Or Zarek. Okay. Um, he is also the other member that does the podcast with me. Sure. So me, Chill Will, and Zarek were known as the trip set. Okay, yep. We just uh, goof around. Um, me and Will kind of have that uh, uh, 
almost a uh, Mal and Rory type thing, man, like where we go back and forth a lot, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's all within good spirit. Yeah, uh, yeah. Then there's Z Ready, who like uh, is the quiet one, but he always gives really good insight mm-hmm. where it makes you be like, damn, dude, like, I didn't even think of that. <laughs> right, so, right. Um, yeah, we do that every Thursdays, and uh, it's a really good time. And um, I've been doing podcasting for years, uh, three or four years. Okay. Um, but I've been running with them. Uh, for a little less than a year. Okay. So, um, it's it's growing pains, <laughs> cause like, but we have these meetings and it always turns out really well. And mm-hmm. then we go into the show and it just turns out really well. Tight. So. Yeah, man. Uh, when I did that show, uh, it just felt good. Mm-hmm. It, it felt like the natural vibe was definitely there. Yeah. Um, between y'all and we grew up together. Oh, so well, that was the, <laughs> that makes sense. That's the thing. Uh, me, Will, and Zarek, uh, and Corvin, we all went to high school together. Okay. Um, this I know Cooper. Yes. Okay. Yep. Uh, I've known Corvin since middle school. Okay. Uh, sixth grade, and so uh, I met Will in ninth, mm-hmm. and then Zarek is a year older than me. Mm. He so um, I met him just being around everybody else, mm-hmm. um, and so uh, Corvin does gaming he mm-hmm. enjoys it yeah, he, yeah. and that's his thing and so uh we're like dude we utilize facebook and so he puts a lot of streams up there we're getting a lot of views and it's cool yeah uh will actually asked me if he can be on the podcast because i was spiraling down like mm. um i was had on popper media left on popper media uh kind of like disbanded it mm-hmm. because it was just me like one man team. <laughs> sure. So I'm like, it doesn't matter. I've right? definitely been there before. Yeah, <laughs> so then I went to go join some uh, people at strong style media, which are some friends of mine. Mm-hmm. Right. That fell South. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, on proper media, like took the dust off the crate. You know what I mean? I'm knocking stuff over. Or stuff, <laughs> no, my bad. All good, all but you know what I mean? Like uh, knocking dust off the crate, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Open it back up and there's the improper media. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so uh, I'm like, well, if I got to do this, I, I got to get help. Like, I can't do it by myself. Mm-hmm. So that's when Corvin was like, well, I'm down to help, whatever. And then Will and Zarek uh, asked if they can join the podcast. And I'm like, sure. And so it's been working very, very well um, since we've all got together and decided to do what we wanted to do. Cool. Um, it's a lot of headbutts because I'm the type of person where I'm like, go, go, go. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, like, okay, like, I got 60 things I want to do. Let's get them all done at once. Yeah. And Will's like, nah, one at a time. You know, and Corbin's like, I get what you're saying, Kyle. Like, we do need to move <laughs> forward, but Will's kind of right, man. I think we should really take our time. Yeah. But Will, you should really listen to what Kyle's saying too. And it's like, so, <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> it's it's uh, it really leads to some really fun meetings. Yeah, um, man. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's it's running really great, and I'm looking forward to the future. That's tight. So if uh, someone wanted to check you guys out, where where can they check you out at? Uh, Facebook.com forward slash Unpopper Media. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, that's where you can see most of our um, video game streams. Mm-hmm. Um, and then blogtalkradio.com forward slash unpopular media okay. is where you can catch the uh, shows. But we're also on Spotify. Nice. Shout out to you, by the way, getting on Spotify. Word. That's Thank a big you, man. thing, man. Thank you. I appreciate like, that. <laughs> that. That is really, that is a really good spot to uh, get your podcast listened on. So, Thank you so much. Um, yeah. So uh, Spotify, iTunes, mm-hmm. um, Stitcher. Uh, tune in all them other places yeah. we're available on there too So cool man that's dope um, as far as gaming goes uh, what do you fuck with gaming wise like how long have you been into gaming like where did it start and where are you at now oh as man this is a, a, a yeah, long winded question you ready for yeah, this yeah no. man um, alright so my, my gaming goes all the way back to Probably Nintendo. Okay. Um, I can probably say Atari, but I wouldn't have much recollection sure, of it. Right. So I'm just going to stick with Nintendo cool. because that's where I played like uh, Terminator. Mm. I played um, uh, a Double Dribble. I played Dragon? A Double Dribble, which was a basketball double game. Double Dribble. I okay. did play Double Dragon okay. as well. Okay. Um, and I did play uh, Double Dragon versus Battletoads, things like that. Oh, shit. You know what I mean? Battletoads. Yeah, Battletoads is a good yeah. one too. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, so Nintendo, Super Nintendo. Uh, my mom bought me a Sega Genesis. So that was my very first system. Okay. But um, being at uh, the OG Granny's house, she would have a game system for all of us to play. Nice. Because... Just uh, to keep the kids... Yeah, because this is a big family. Okay. You know, my uh, uh, grandma came from 14 and she had 10 of her own. Wow. Yeah, and so it's a big, big family. Yeah, so, man, that's uh, beautiful. Oh, yeah, OG Grandma had... Uh, 
uh, the game system down there for everyone to play. Nice, so, nice. But my, my mom saved up enough money when I was five. I bought a Sega Genesis, mm-hmm. and it came with Quack Shots, which was uh, like DuckTales. Okay. And uh, it was a game with Donald Duck, and you had a plunger gun, and you went through different bosses and, and beat it that way sure um and then uh let's see so sonic and knuckles or sonic yeah, sonic have... sonic and knuckles yeah, i did yeah. that i did okay. super mario i okay. did um zelda okay um yeah, yeah. i even go to like boxing i played evander holyfield's oh, real fuck deal yeah man you know yeah um what else man i played like a bunch i i, I love gaming yeah right um i've pretty much had every system almost set for like on um, playstation 4 maybe sure. you know um, but I've had, uh, uh, man, so like, and what was funny is like, uh, my buddy Corbin was talking about, uh, the GameStop, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And how that Funko was a culture. Land. Yeah. Funko Land. Funko Turn, Land was the GameStop. culture, man. Yeah, like, man. like Funko Land where you got to test the games Fuck yeah. and <laughs> you got to play so many games and before they're like, all right, dude, like we're kind of tired. So either you buy some or you go. The magazines back then too were the yeah. shit. Yeah, and like, you had the demos in every magazine oh, and stuff like yeah, that. Man, like the yeah. uh, the the uh, the uh, the uh, PlayStation PlayStation one. demos. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, those mm. demo discs were the shit. Yep. Um, I have a Nintendo sixty four. I had Xbox. Um, I currently own an Xbox One mm. now. Um, but I also have. I grew up Sony. Okay, yeah. So, Sony and Sega Genesis. Um, I did have a Dreamcast. Okay. Um, so, Power Stone. Yeah. Uh, Marvel vs. Capcom. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, let's get ready to rumble. Crazy Taxi at all? Yep. Yeah. Play Crazy Taxi. Yeah. Um, I have a strong background in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Fuck yeah. <laughs> uh, Matt Hoffman's BMX. Okay. Um, by the way, didn't Matt Hoffman just pass not too long ago? I can't confirm that currently. Hang on here. We're gonna get a live update. You okay. know, I I think I think you're right. I think you're right, but I also don't want to throw it out there if he's not. Yeah, but I saying. I heard that he like passed recently, and so shout out. Okay. Or not shout out to him, but rest in peace. If rest he in did. peace <laughs> if he is passed but away. His good games. So. So is that like <laughs> the same? Was it the same people that made the Tony Hawk games? Yeah, that made Activision. His game. Yep. Let's yep. see here. Did you hear about how uh, THPS? got started about how like the demo was originally like it was supposed to be some like a uh, die hard game or something and the <laughs> original model for tony hawk was like bruce and it was bruce on the fucking skateboard, skateboard? and shit oh crazy yeah man yeah there's some there's some youtube shit out there why did not let him in the game as like an unlockable you know Matt Hoffman is definitely still alive. Okay, that's good. Shout out Matt Hoffman, man. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Well, I, I could have sworn I heard something. So that's good. Glad he's alive. So shout out to him for still being alive. Yeah, man. And making dope games in my childhood. Hit us up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please. Let us know you're okay and that you call, can confirm this. Call in the show. Call in the, uh, <laughs> uh, the blog talk show or the organized grind show, man. We'll chop it up with you. Yeah, man. And, uh, and I'll apologize to you on the, <laughs> for thinking that you died. Oh, man, I feel bad now. Oh, it's all good, man. He's still alive and rocking, man. That's a great thing. Um, yo, I think we could probably do a second commercial break here soon. Uh, before we do, uh, what's what's the future for unpopular media, man? Like, what's oh. in the works? Can you share some um, jewels or some tidbits? We're working on uh, our live videos. Okay. Um, right now. We're doing the podcast, but it's all remote. Okay. So, like, I'm uh, in St. Paul. Will is in Maple Grove. And Zarek is Crystal. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. Wow. So, y'all are scattered. Yeah. But, like, Blog Talk allows us to be all in one spot at, you know, once. But to be honest, man, like, it's not crispy as a good quality of output Mm -hmm. on the shows. Mm -hmm. So, um, we're thinking of just doing it you know recording live and releasing it and yeah. um then doing facebook live while we're doing the show yeah yep. i've been thinking the same thing here of just setting up just one to start with and just have it on the cell phone just to begin with just to yeah. get something going yeah and see and i think it will work with you because you have a really nice backdrop man oh, like thank you the studio is nice thank you yeah is all this did you do all this artwork by the way oh yeah yep Yep, um, most of it on the walls is me, and then on the walls, too, I got some of the records that I produced and put out. Yeah, that's cool. Throughout my life, and yeah, man, but... that's You don't think that's a bit narcissistic? What is that word, narcissistic? 
Um, you know what? <laughs> I feel like if you go if if, uh, if you go through the work of releasing a project that's on a physical media, yeah, it deserves to be archived I'm and proud shown. Of it. Yeah, you're proud of it. You worked hard on that shit. Yeah. You spent the money on that shit. You pushed that shit for at least a year. You did shows to promote it. Yeah. It deserves to live. At least you didn't That's pull a uh, MC Trust Us on like CB4 and spray paint it gold. <laughs> <laughs> and then like post it up. <laughs> uh, go, go, go. Right. <laughs> yo, that's funny as hell. But uh, yo, let's go ahead and do a second commercial break here, yeah. and then we'll uh, we'll get back into the show. We'll do something that I call the lightning gauntlet, and uh, we'll do some final shout outs, and then uh, we have a track from Captive Agents that we'll be playing at the end of this. So Tight. stay tuned. This is Organized Grind, the podcast with Oracle Uno, kicking it with Half Pint. That's me. We'll be right back. Yo. yo. Represent in the Midwest, this is Truth Maze. Yes, y'all. Check out the new EP. It's entitled The Holy Bible. You can find it on Spotify and Apple Music and elsewhere. Red Pill Music, baby. Huh. You see what my words I can heal or kill. Talk fuck shit or truly keep it real. I can grab up a burner and flame my brother. I can train so we elevate each other I can talk about pussy all day and all night And not admit I'm toxic and don't treat women right I can tell everybody how to pop a new pill Or tell the next generation the matrix is real Cause what I know is I hold the power at will Still sharp and still god damn it it's ill For mentally the blade I hold it takes skill Specially designed so I can kill Bill When the fake shit in me I need to reveal that's what a God does with the ability to build My soul is my rock, my spirit's my shield My soul is my rock, my spirit's my shield Yes, yes, y'all. This is Organized Grind, the podcast, kicking it with Half Pint. Hello again. And uh, it looks like it was Dave Mira that passed away. Dave Mira. Dave Mira, mm. 2016, was the BMX biker. I see. Yeah, I know Dave Mira. Oh. All right, I was I was thinking maybe because I was like, oh, I, yeah. I, but yeah, I, once you I, I remember like, oh. someone passed away. He did have a game as well. Yes, Dave he did. Mira did. Yes, yes, he did. Yep. So rest in peace, Dave Mira. Shout out Matt Hoffman. Man. Yeah, so still Matt Hoffman is funny though. He was on the uh, Nitro Circus crew and Jackass crew and all that. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Fucking the Travis Jackass. Pastrama. Yeah. And can't kill yourself <laughs> and all them. Bam, yeah. Bam Margera and all them. <laughs> yep. Yo, yo, Bam, have you been keeping up with Bam? He's a heartbreaker, bro. Like, he is, he is, but... Because, like, I heard he's actually actually on a path, yeah. like, he turned himself around and right. he's skating again, is right. that right? Yes. Yeah, yes. and it was all, like, I, I get it, because I, I, I even felt when Ryan Dunn passed, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, for like, sure. I watched Jackass, mm -hmm. but I watched uh, Wild Boys mm -hmm. and everything else, and uh, with Chris Pontius and Steve-O, and, yeah. uh, but with Ryan Dunn, man, like, watching Vibu a Bam and seeing him as mm -hmm. a person, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it it sucked because, like, he was one of the good ones. Yeah, man. You know? Yeah. Uh, along with Nipsey and everything else. Like, the good yeah. ones always pass, man. It, it really breaks your heart. Like, I think, like... Uh, going on a tangent, my bad. And that's just that's the podcast in me. But Go ahead, man. Uh, I think I felt it when uh, Nipsey passed, Ryan Dunn, Bernie Mac, mm -hmm. uh, Aaliyah, mm. and Eddie Guerrero. I think we're uh, like Ed Eddie Guerrero, and he actually died here too. He did. Yeah, he did downtown. Yeah, man. Uh, rest in peace to the dead and uh, respects. Yeah, blessings. Yeah. Yo, let's get into uh, this lightning gauntlet here. So uh, what this is, is this is a game of random ass questions. I'm about to put Half Pint through the lightning gauntlet. <laughs> um, so first random question for Half Pint of unpopular media, so to sound radio. <laughs> what is your all time biggest computer catastrophe? Oh, man. Um, actually, oh, my birthday, which was March 30th, so not even that long ago. Okay. Um, I bought a brand new graphics card mm -hmm. and tried to put it in. Um, okay, so here's the thing. If you're if you're installing more than one component, don't do it all at once, one at a time. Okay. Right? So I bought RAM, I bought graphics card, I put them all in at once because mm. it's been years since I actually put a computer together, right? Mm -hmm. So not even thinking about the golden, like one of the golden rules. So I put them all in there, computer fails. 
don't know why because mm. I did everything all at once, yeah. right? Yeah. So, um, as I'm trying to take the graphics card out, the lock was like keeping the graphics card in there. So I'm pulling the graphics card, and um, inside is where the slot is. Mm-hmm. It's just a piece of plastic that holds all the pins together, mm-hmm. right? So the plastic came out, messed up my whole motherboard, uh... um, and then I spent. Three hundred hours on those computer parts. Yeah, had to spend another uh, three, four hundred just to buy a new motherboard, Damn. a whole new processor, a whole, and more RAM. Damn man. Yeah, but it's worth it. Oof. But it, yeah, but yeah, computer parts could be really spendy, really spendy. But it can save you if you know what you're doing. For sure. But just um, don't uh, get impatient. Uh, cause building computers, fixing computers is really a patience man game. Word. Yeah. Computer diagnostics with hand fighting here. That, <laughs> that, that's actually crazy that that's, that that's I know. a question that, that came up. Too. It's, <laughs> like, it's like these cards know what we're talking about. <laughs> All right. Second question of the lightning gauntlet for half pint. This is, if you were going to write a novel under a pen name, what would you choose as your name? I would just stick with half pint. There you go. You know, that, that was actually a bully name. Okay. A boy used to give me that name. Okay. Half pint. Talk about it. You ain't shit, half pint. You know? And so, like, I just stuck with it. Okay. Are we supposed to cuss? Can we cuss? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. You can fucking cuss. All right, my bad. Yeah. Yeah, So, like, you know, he used to pick on me, use it, you know, whatever. And uh, uh, I'm always the type to where um, uh, I use comedy. Mm-hmm. Not saying like as a way to filter pain, mm-hmm. uh, try, not trying to like make damper the show or anything, but Go ahead, man. Go ahead. <laughs> but like you know what I mean. Like I, I joke, I, I make people laugh. That's what I do, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's just always been in me just to make people laugh. Uh, you'd like me, you know? Yeah, cool, yeah. whatever. Um, and so, uh, I guess we were friends, but he would just always pick on me and call me half pint. Mm-hmm. And so, um. I just decided to say, well, I am short. I'm only five feet. <laughs> so yeah. uh, just might as well run with it. Okay. You know? So like what age was this? Uh, Five. Oh, wow. Yeah, so five or six. So this has been like your whole life. You've yeah, this. yeah. And so like um, I actually went through different names. Uh, at first I was Snowman because okay. of Minnesota. Okay. But I'm like, wait, that's associated with... Uh, snow with like cocaine yeah so i'm like Yo, i can't do that <laughs> my mom was the first one um to let me know that like one of my first screen names or like hotmail accounts was like was like antonio the snow king yeah and, like she was like i'm not a fan of that and i was like why she was like mm, that 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 means something else and i was like what and she's like like cocaine i yeah. was like what like yeah. i was all young and shit i had no idea i was just like snow man it's yeah. minnesota were you born and raised here yeah yeah, okay, Paul. see, and I was born and raised in North Minneapolis in Brooklyn Center, yeah, right? Yeah. So, like, it, it is just a given, snow. Like, you want to put it in there because you want <laughs> right. to rep where you're from, right. right? And so I'm like, yeah, I'm the snowman, da 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 And my aunt. Just trying to be a kid. <laughs> just, just being a kid. Well, I, was only, I was only 13 when I came up with that, right? And they're like, hey, cut that out. You know what I mean? And my family, like, again, my family's from North Minneapolis. Right. I actually have family that's, you know, affiliated with mm-hmm. that. So they're like, mm-hmm. Kill that. Yeah. Um, me being from the suburbs. Oh, okay. You, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's so funny, though. Like, we're just kids. <laughs> it's an innocent thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's funny, though. But shout out to having street smart parents. Yeah. Because they fucking put you on game at Absolutely. an early age, and then you don't fuck around out here. Absolutely. All right. Last question of the lightning gauntlet. We're getting deep o- o- over here in this shit. <laughs> Let's see here. What do you still need to accomplish in your career slash profession for you and you alone to feel truly successful? Oh, man. Um, you know, when when you become in the broadcasting game or streaming game, um, you spend money to just stay alive. Mm. Um, it's not um, a money move. Mm-hmm. It's an investment. Right. And so... Um, um, one thing I guess about it, um, when (laughs) I feel like I made it is when I start making money, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Being honest, like, (laughs) and so, um, me putting a lot of money into this, a lot of uh, effort and stuff like that. Um, when I've, when I feel like I've finished, uh, or hit the finish line is when I start making money. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. and so, um. Not saying that, like, again, this is all about a money move because right. it's all passion. Right. You know, but that just that's just the answer to the question. Yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of crazy when people 
like ask me too, like, yo, are you like making some money? And I'm like, hey, nope, I'm actually in the <laughs> hole right now. <laughs> exactly. Um, and yeah, I'm doing it because I happen to be friends with a lot of people that I feel have a good history and story to tell. And it's just nice because I normally kick it with these people yeah. and we always have stories and we always talk about shit. And so yeah. this is my way of archiving our piece of what I feel is a beautiful history here. It is. It you is. Know? It's it's really something that you could reflect. And even just like, because when, when we do podcasting, for me, I do two hours, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I do it live, mm -hmm. but that's still two hours that you only know of me, right? Yeah. yeah. But when me, when I can go back and look at these old shows, I'm like, oh, that was a good time in my life, you know? And, oh, that was a really good, you know, mo interview or whatever, you yeah. know? Um, so I think it's really cool. Um, and then also when you reach an audience and them saying like, oh, I felt you on that or, or I thought that was really funny when this right. happened yeah. and it's like, okay. And now you got a connection and, uh, it's, I don't know. It's some rewarding about it is just knowing that people are interested in, in what you have to say for sure because because it's almost a selfish thing like i want to make a podcast because i want people to hear me you know <laughs> right <laughs> and then it's like but then like when people hear you it's like oh great you know and it's it's cool yeah man dope well hey man um final shout outs final plugs um man thank you for having mm -hmm. me on here thank um, you for having me on soda <laughs> sound you know what i'm saying yeah i've i never uh been invited on to be interviewed oh shit so i thought that was really cool i've been on other people's podcasts as like a guest panel like doing like segments and shit sure but, yeah but i've never been uh, interviewed and so i thought that was really cool okay um so thank you thank you man um shout out to people who listen to me mm -hmm. shout out to the new people uh who's gonna listen to me mm -hmm. um Thank you, Blog Talk, for providing that outlet. Thank you, Facebook, providing an outlet. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, just keep on listening. Uh, Facebook.com forward slash Unpopular Media. BlogTalk.com forward slash Unpopular Media. Um, or if you're your favorite uh, streaming service, just type in Soda, S-O-T-A, Sound Radio for Minnesota. And then you'll see our three ugly mugs. You'll see me in the middle. I have a hat. Nice. Sounds like you've done this before, man. <laughs> so, yo. That was my first time. Ah, <laughs> you're natural, bro. Thank you. Um, Yo, so we are going to go ahead. We're going to end this episode. It's episode 14 of Organized Grind the Podcast yeah. with Oracle Uno, kicking it with Kyle, Half Pint of Soda Sound Radio, Unpopular Media. We have a song uh, from a couple of friends of mine uh, called Captive Agents. This song is called Hard Hitter. Um, it's off of their new project that's out or coming out, something like that. But check them out, Captive Agents, Hard Hitter. This is Organized Grind, the podcast. As always, peace and love. Organized Grind with Oracle Uno. Recorded live at Grassroots Studios in South Minneapolis. <laughs> Jackie was some footwork It smell like paint White sheet, white walls Wolf, wolf, ghost doors Me, Jack, I walk on all four Say Laurent in the clouds Up on the ocean Bombshell, Coco Chanel Neck is ringing Mind and calling It's a clash, I agree Yeah, boy, some man Where did they deserve to get the meaning? Black boots, beavers and broccoli Hey, I'm talking about I'm aiming, I'm a ringer And I'm a boss, brother, boys up Bumping ass, cause they're on YouTube Money is a major insanity Got my motor coat on the floor She's so rude, I ain't mad at me That is what all Down the street, I'm Chris walking, but no Russian roulette. We too deaf, my crew never half stepping. Word to cane, no option. Brass keep the beat, make it sick, neurotoxin. Thoughts are going the hogs in my dream. I hear shots, scramble up the wall to breathe. It's funny how your eyes split in the morning light. Pull the shades, cause today is Y2K. In due time, wanna test me, try to prove mine. That's fine. All you MCs serve like food lines. I decline the violence. I'm shaking your hand through my ego in a trash can to become a man. Swept up with the Wizard of Oz, a lift off. Cut your back, guys. Storms help me sleep. Next level gets harder. That's when I show up with the Molotovs. Take out the end boss. Turntables for the jam all night with my buddies and the girls looking lovely. Get down, boogie, oogie, take a taste of.
Un one time for my peeps trying to do what's right. Living life in the zone, step in the light. Black and tan is my jam, and we making a stand. All my peeps know me like the back of the hand. And we not about to stop till the morning departure. Dancing, Charlie Atkins, Ginger Roger. We hitting like Barry Bonds, juice to the bone. Please, coach, check your purse, baby, no cell phone. Ask Siegfried and Roy if you want to bite. Red lights at night, don't feel bright. When you hear the groove, then it's time to move. Coming through with the crew straight out of the blue. Yeah, I wanna tell you about it. Yeah, well, everybody was. Ah.